speaker crossovers. Are we sure that we are positioning them, putting them correctly inside our speakers? Are we sure this is not influencing the sonics, the quality of the reproduction? I found out something quite interesting that I want to share with you. Are you ready? Let's dive in now. Okay, guys, so let's jump in immediately on the topic. So first of all, what is a crossover? For those of you who don't know, all speakers, except those that are full range, meaning that they have only one uh, loudspeaker, one woofer, one only driver, single driver that is capable of delivering all the frequencies, normal uh, speakers have two, three or more ways meaning multiple drivers. And usually each driver has a specific range of frequencies that they must, should reproduce, okay? For example, I have my Altec 19s and I have a compression driver for the horns and a woofer for the mid-low frequencies. Hence, the crossover has the difficult task to separate the frequencies with some filtering and direct uh, just a portion of the spectrum of the frequencies to that specific component, driver or uh, woofer or whatever it is, or super treater. You never know. I mean, it depends. But that's the role of a, of a crossover, which, as you can understand, it's difficult. It's difficult also to find the right turning point where you have the roll off of one because it's clearly never going to be steep a complete cut off it's going to be slight the slope is going to be gentle let's say and it has to cross at the right position in order to have a more or less let's say flat frequency it's never going to be flat it's going to be very very moved there maybe a lot of up and downs nevertheless you that is one of the the difficult parts in designing also crossover to find the right, the correct place in order to have a nice homogeneous reproduction of most of the spectrum let's say okay so this is the main concept now i want to try to share with you my story okay and what happened to me and why hence this video okay so the topic is connected to my Altec 19s. As I said, since inside the original crossover was very, very old. I mean, I tried, it was still working, but the capacitors are very old. Uh, you just take a look at it and you immediately understand that you're not fully uh, achieving the full quality, the full, uh, let's say, correct uh, work, the correct crossing over of the frequencies with that or at least not in the condition that it was so i decided to try i wasn't expecting much but try other crossovers so as you know i did a video on the first one i found on internet on ebay made by someone with decent quality components here is a link you're going to find all the links in the video description and the results were very promising, absolutely much better than the original built-in crossover by Altic. Once again, at least in the condition that it is now, which is not optimal. Maybe in the beginning it was better or similar, don't know. But at that point, I wanted to try something even better. So I actually landed on two very high quality types. One of these is designed by Pete Riggle, and I did a dedicated video. Here, once again, is the link. And at that point, I also wanted to test the famous ones that you see around more than those of Pete's. The one designed by Werner Jagusz. Uh, and I actually, I did, I, I mentioned this in a few videos, that I did receive a pair. But the problem started there. In the beginning, I thought the problems were connected to the crossovers by Werner. Some kind of mismatching or 
not necessarily his crossovers, but the things were not working out. But then I noticed that something, the same thing was happening also in the other crossovers. What was the problem? The problem was that on specific recordings with piano, okay, with piano, and I would say not perfect uh, piano recordings or old jazz piano recordings, those that strong reverb, that strong number, high number of harmonics, that strong signal that comes out from a piano. I mean, it is a, a difficult instrument to reproduce. I started to hear strong distortion on those piano notes, not on the rest, not on the rest, only on piano. Very strange. And it was difficult to understand that the problem was the crossovers because this did not happen immediately. Or maybe just by chance I wasn't listening to recordings, albums with piano. That could be, but that's not my impression. I also went back to check my notes. This happened at a certain stage and it got worse and worse. It's very strange, you guys, very strange. So, unfortunately, uh, since in that phase I thought it was only that of Werner, I sent back the ones to Werner. And, poor guy, it was not his fault. Then I discovered. Because then I put the ones of Pete Riggle inside the cabinet afterwards. I know. How stupid. They're huge. But I said, let's take off the, 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 the cover. I'll put them on the side. It's not going to influence that much. And at the beginning, it, I didn't hear that, that much of a difference. But slowly, when you listening to classical music or jazz music with a lot of piano, oh boy, if things started to deteriorate and they reached the same point uh, as the one with Werner. And I was puzzled. I forgot to mention that I did not experience any problems with the first type of crossover. So maybe there is something connected to specific type of components, of capacitors, of inductors, I don't know. Something is going on with specific parts, not any crossover, okay? This is important. Fortunately, at a certain point, I took them out because I did not think I did not suppose it was that the problem that it were, that the the, the the crossovers inside were creating the problem because usually crossovers are inside speakers, not that big, but I mean that's where they you're, they're usually positioned. I pulled them out. I put them on top. As you can see, I also put here a a platform by um, isoacoustics, the Zazen, to reduce vibrations and. The magic took place. Finally, the reproduction fell perfectly back in the normal reproduction. High quality production, no problem what problem whatsoever. The, the those distortion, that vib strange resonance that were present, gone, completely gone. So at that point, I said, can the components of a crossover be uh, influenced so much by vibrations because clearly inside the cabinet especially where you have the woofer there's a lot of vibrations but also the frequencies are reson resonating are creating microphonic type of sonics micro microphonics the same thing that happens for example with tubes they can generate this distortion and these noises when there are vibrations I went online, I did some research, and yes, that is, I thought it was going to be snake oil, no, blah, 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 impossible. No, a lot of people say this, actually, that mainly capacitors and inductors can create microphonics. Oh, my God. But if this is well known, I don't understand why we are putting these crossovers, even smaller ones, inside our cabinets, our speakers. Okay, before going ahead, I just want to, I want to share with you, fortunately, some recordings I did. It's not the optimal solution. I did this uh, very quickly. In fact, the first part of the recording of the song is missing. 
uh, I, because I was doing this just for myself, okay? It wasn't intended for the video. But I do have a recording with the speak the, um, the crossovers inside because it's a nightmare to to recable everything. So I'm just gonna use that. And a new one I did now, okay? It's pro probably not the same identical situation, but that doesn't matter, okay? We're not doing a finesse type of comparison to hear a difference between a cable or, or a component. It's just so you understand, and I'm gonna put also the original track of this album by Patricia Barber. There is a special track, Samba de Uma Nota So. Very complex, not perfectly recorded, in my opinion, the piano. And in fact, you are going to hear a distinct difference between the original, obviously, but then with the crossovers outside and with the crossovers inside, okay? It's objective, no pro no question, okay? Even if, once again, even if it's not perfect, you will hear immediately the insane amount of distortion that this, the, this, this positioning created. And once again, I want to underline how this grew in time. Very strange. Okay, let's listen. Eis aqui este sambina Feita de uma nota só Outras notas vão entrar Mais a base em uma só Esta outra é consequência Do que acabo de dizer Como eu sou a consequência inevitável de você Quanta gente existe por aí que fala e fala e não diz nada Eis aqui este sambina Feita de uma nota só Outras notas vão entrar mais a base em uma só Esta outra é consequência do que acabo de dizer Como eu sou a consequência inevitável de você Quantas gente existe por aí que fala e fala e não diz nada Este sambina Feita de uma nota só Outras notas vão entrar Mais a base em uma só Esta outra é consequência Do que acabo de dizer Como eu sou a consequência Inevitável de você Okay, guys, the, I'm not even going to put the tracks for download. No need. It's just a quick comparison so you can understand what was going on and why I was so worried. It's incredible. Okay, I was stupid to put them inside. But once again, that is normal to put crossovers, possibly a little more flat, inside the cabinets and i'm sure a lot of people pay attention to this and they find the right solution okay but still what maybe maybe <laughs> this is one of the issues of this i wanted to underline in this video maybe we are living we are listening to our loudspeakers not in the optimal way because of the presence of the crossovers inside the cabinets always inside just a few open baffle or other types have it clearly outside but that's something rare or somebody does some mods like i did absolutely but the norm is the crossover inside because it's more elegant it's more neat and everyone doesn't want stuff and cables around clearly but the question in the big question is are we sure we want crossovers inside are we sure that we are achieving the full potential of our speakers I'm going to leave you with this question. Big question. Okay, guys, leave your comments if you have some similar experience. It's useful for the community. 
Thank you for watching, and remember that music is born analog. Bye. Hey there, if you are enjoying my content, please consider to subscribe. It's free, and it will help the channel tremendously. Also, don't forget to explore my prior videos. There's something for everyone. Welcome to the audiophile community.